Let's do another example. I've already started off by showing you that from 9 to 24 is 15, 40, there's the first difference, and the second difference is constant. Therefore, this pattern is quadratic, and hopefully, well, the ones I'm going to give you, I'll tell you, they are rectangular numbers. So, these are the numbers. Now I need to figure out the dimensions of the rectangle. To find the dimensions, I have to start factoring my values. So for 9, it could be 1 and 9, or 3 and 3. 24 is 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6, 45, 1 and 45, 3 and 15, 5 and 9, and maybe we can find a pattern already. So Within these dimensions, I need to find two linear patterns that run simultaneously. And we'll just see if that one works for there. Can you see one already? If I go from, I could do a 1, 2, 3, but what about 9, 12, 15? Is that, does that make a linear pattern? It may indeed, right? I could also, let's see, 9 plus, that's 3, and that, that does work. See, one, two, three. That could be one pattern. And that's just n, right? That matches my coefficient of n. And then, sorry, my values. Nine, 12, 15. That's 3n, right? Excuse me. Well, it's actually going to be 3n uh, plus 6. Is that right? Because it would be 3 times n minus 1 plus 9. I kind of jumped, I jumped ahead right there. Um, let's see. And if I, if I check it, if I put a 1 in there, I get a 9. If I put a 2 in there, I get a 12. So... It looks like I can write this pattern as n times 3n plus 6. And, of course, that's a sub n is equal to that. Yes? Um, now, is that the only one? Sometimes there are multiple answers going on. And, in fact, this one has one. I could have also chosen uh, 3, oh, let's see, and then I would have to jump to 4, 5, right? 3, 4, 5, that's going to be 3, 4, 5, and that would be an n, that's a linear pattern, constant of 1 plus 2, and then that goes with that one, let's give them a color, that would be 3, 6, 9. And that is a constant of 3. So it's 3n and back. Oh, just 3n, right? 1 times 3. So I could have written it as 3n times n plus 2. Now, if I did this right, these two should be congruent. And if you multiply them out, that is 3n squared plus 6n, and that's 3n squared plus 6n. Yay. I did it right. Our last problem for the evening is a handshake problem. Here we go. If there are 60 guests at a party and everyone shakes hands exactly once, how many handshakes will occur? Okay. So I don't have 60 people at my house right now. Uh, and so I'm going to have to figure out a way. So I'm going to make a model that will demonstrate this. All right, so I was told that no matter how bad the problem is, there's a smaller problem that is just as bad. So let's make this smaller. Instead of 60, let's pretend I'm by myself. How many handshakes will occur? And the answer, of course, would be zero, right? If there are two people at my party, 
there will be one handshake and we are done. Right? Three people? There are three handshakes. Four people. Okay. Now it's going to be interesting. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Oh, but this person's got to check here and there. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six handshakes total. All right, what about five? One, two, three, four, five handshakes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Maybe I have enough data now to answer my question. Zero, one, three, six, ten. Do I have a pattern established? As a matter of fact, I think I do. It is quadratic. The second difference is plus one. So it is quadratic. It works. Now, if I try to use the rectangular rules to try to find the pattern here, it's gonna there's gonna be a problem. Zero has could be zero times anything. The only factors of one are one and one, right? Integer fact, factors. Three is one and three. So, okay, have a problem. So here is a trick. If you can't figure out the rule, double it. Just double the pattern. Now, when we write our rule, we'll undouble it. So if you double zero, that's zero. If you double one, that's two, six, 12, 20. Okay, and now try this. By doubling it, now we have even numbers, makes it easier. Factors of zero. Well, that's zero times something. I don't know what that is. Zero times, I don't, I don't know, it doesn't matter. One and two, six is gonna be one and six, two and three. 12 will be one and 12, two and six, three and four. Do you see the pattern? One and 20, two and 10. Four and five. Hopefully you have seen it as I'm writing it. Uh, let's see. I can see a one, two, three, four, and of course that follows the zero there. And I've filled in now that would be five, four, three, two, and I can place a one there. And zero times one would work. So for the circle pattern, zero, one, two, three. That's a constant of constant difference of one, so it's a one in, but it starts off at zero, so it's going to be n minus one is the rule for for the circles. For its matching rectangle is one, two, three, four, five. Oh, that one matches one, two, three. Five, that matches in. So the rule for this 0, 2, 6, 12, 20 is n times n minus 1. But that is my double rule. If I want the 0, 1, 3, 6, 10 rule, I need to undouble it, otherwise known as divide by 2. So n times n minus 1 divide it by 2 will give me my uh, problem there and you can check it if I if so if I have two people at the party it's 2 times 1 divided by 2 1 there you go now come in tomorrow how many handshakes will there be for 60